So dear students, let us start with part 11 of chapter 1, post-fertilization changes, that is post-pollination events. Now when the pollen grain falls on the stigma of the pistil, it germinates. This process of fertilization was discovered by Strasburger in 1884. Now after pollination, the intine of the pollen grain forms pollen tube because of endosmosis, because of pressure. This process of formation of a pollen tube for fertilization is called as siphonogamy. Growth of the pollen tube is stimulated by the sugary substance that is present in the stigma and this movement of the pollen tube is because of the chemotropic, the chemical movement, chemotropic movements. The pollen tube along with the two male gametes is runs through the style and it reaches finally the embryo sac in the cavity. Now the path of this entry of pollen tube into the ovule is just carried out by three ways. If the pollen tube is entering through the micropyle, we call it as porogamy. If it is entering through the chalazal end, we call it as chalazogamy. If the pollen tube enters from the integuments, we call it as mesogamy. Most common one is porogamy, that is through the micropyle. Now, this is a revision for you. This was the embryo sac. At the chalazal end, there are three antipodals. At the micropylar ends, these are two synergids. Behind the synergids, you can see egg, all are haploid. In the center, you can see polar nuclei, which are fused to form a secondary nucleus. Only this secondary nucleus or central cell, it is deployed. Now, when the style of the pistil, it may be hollow or solid and the pollen tube passes through it. On piercing the nucellus, the pollen tube now enters and reaches the embryo sac. It will reach over here. The tip of the pollen tube, it will burst and the two male gametes are discharged over here. The tube nucleus, it disorganizes, which we also call as the vegetative nucleus. It disorganizes, disintegrates. The first male gamete out of the two male gametes, it fuses with the egg. This fusion of the first male gamete with the egg is called as syngamy or generative fertilization. The filiform apparatus. What are filiform apparatus? Here in the picture you can see some finger like processes are formed in the synergids which are called as the filiform apparatus. They literally guide the process of fertilization. They facilitate syngamy. So this later first fertilization it results in or syngamy it results in the formation of embryo. In this second picture you can see how the pollen tube is reached over here. The filiform apparatus is guiding the male gametes to carry out syngamy. After this syngamy, the second fertilization takes place. You can see in this picture two male gametes. First male gamete already syngamy occurred. The result of syngamy is formation of embryo. And the second male gamete, it goes and fuses with the secondary nucleus. Secondary nucleus was deployed. The second male gamete is haploid. So this is called as triple fusion because now the primary endosperm nucleus which is formed as a result of the second fertilization, it has three sets of chromosomes. And what is the result of triple fusion? It helps in formation of endosperm. Thus, this is also called as vegetative fertilization. I will repeat again. First male gamete fuses with egg. Syngamy. First fertilization resulting into formation of embryo. Second male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus. Triple fusion, vegetative fertilization, result is formation of endosperm. This process of double fertilization in angiosperms was discovered by S.G. Nawaschin in case of Fritillaria species. What is the significance of this double fertilization? It is found only in angiospermic plants. It facilitates the growth of further embryo sac. Due to triple fusion, endosperm is formed which will later provide nourishment or nourish, nutrition to the developing embryo. If fertilization fails, no endosperm will be formed and this avoids wastage of energy in the development of endosperm. This is not present in, this provision is not present in gymnosperm. So this is the significance of double fertilization. Only this can be asked for two marks in your exam. Now post fertilization changes we can study in two steps. First is A endosperm formation, second is embryo formation. In today's video I will teach you only about endosperm formation. In next video we will study about embryo formation. Endosperm formation takes place by three methods. First is nuclear type, second is cellular type, third is halobial type. First let us see nuclear type. Nuclear type is very simple. 
this is our primary endosperm nucleus which is formed as a result of double fertilization this is triploid in nature it will divide to form two nuclei no cytoplasmic division takes place only nucleus are dividing in one cell again this nucleus divides to form two more this nucleus divides to form two more again these two will divide to form two more these two will divide to form two more and so what you can see in one cell there are many nuclei so in nuclear type many nuclei are formed first and at the end cytoplasmic division or cytokinesis take place the best example is coconut water everybody of us we drink tender coconut water that tender coconut water is formed by it is liquid endosperm it is formed by nuclear type of endosperm formation and so it has thousands of nuclei inside it and at the end it will result in formation of the cell wall formation it is also seen in case of maize now in areca areca is supari the endosperm becomes very hard and it stays with the nut so it is also called as a remnant type of endosperm it is developed by nuclear type only the second type is called as the cellular type it is very simple here cell division takes place so first this was our primary endosperm nucleus it divides to form two nuclei immediately cell plate formation takes place cytokinesis occurs and two cell structures are formed again this cell will divide to form two cells nuclear division followed by cytokinesis this cell divides to form two cell again every cell division is occurring in two steps karyokinesis cytokinesis karyokinesis cytokinesis so at the end endosperm is having multicellular structure many cells are there if you remember in nuclear type there were many nuclei coconut water in endosperm in cellular type many cells are there in nuclear type at the end cell wall takes place here it is taking place simultaneously it is can be seen in petunia datura balsam etc in coconut the white kernel part in marathi we call it as khopra that khopra is nothing but the cellular endosperm so this is cellular type the third type is called as the helobial type it occurs in helobiaceae family here it is an intermediate type means what is happening this is our primary endosperm nucleus first it will divide into two cell stage with two nucleus the smaller chamber is called as the chalazal chamber which is towards the chalazal end the larger chamber is called as the micropylar chamber which is towards the micropylar end only first division is karyokinesis followed by cytokinesis after this it will follow the pattern of nuclear division only nucleus divides 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 forming many nuclear condition and at the end every nucleus is surrounded by a cytokinesis and so this is helobial type so here cytokinesis takes place only first time afterwards subsequently nuclear division takes place and at the end cytokinesis will occur for every nucleus so this is occurring in case of the sphodels okay and i already told you about ruminant endosperm ruminant manje the endosperm remains with the seed is in case of areca catechu areca catechu is supari it is having a ruminate endosperm which is formed by which type nuclear type then first type so with this i have completed the process of formation of endosperm let us see what happens to this endosperm what is the fate of endosperm it is meant for nourishing the embryo it provides food for the embryo developing embryo which will later develop into seed now sometimes the endosperm is completely consumed when the embryo formation is occurring and the endosperm does not occurs or it is not present in the seed such seed without an endosperm is called as ex albuminous seed or non endospermic seed albumin means nothing but the endosperm the nutritious part so examples are pea beans groundnut they are ex albuminous they do not have endosperm so in the seed the food is stored in the cotyledon till the plant develops they are also called as cotyledonous seeds in case of endospermic seeds the endosperm persist so these seeds are also called as albuminous seeds or endospermic seeds they also have cotyledon but the cotyledon in them is papery and the entire food is stored in the endosperm best example is castor coconut coconut just now we saw it is having liquid endosperm also and a white kernel endosperm also rice wheat 
मेज बार्ली ऑल मोनोकॉट सीड्स आर एंडोस्पर्मिक सीड इन डायकॉट द बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल इज केस ऑफ कैस्टर एरंडी सो वी हैव यूर फिनिश्ड how is endosperm form what is the fate of endosperm we also discussed double fertilization syngamy and the second type that is the formation of primary endosperm nucleus in the next video i will teach you about embryo development the second part till that time revise all this thank you